from a gameplay perspective as well as a mechanical perspective. Payday 3 is a wonderful game. It's got a lot to offer, it's a lot of fun, and it's a ton of fun, especially if you've got people to run around and play the game with. It's a blast. It's a really great time. But as I've interacted with the community, I've gotten to know people, and I've heard their feedback on what could be improved with the game. The user interface and user experience are two things that are commonplace in the areas of improvement that people suggest. My name is Pepe Chad. Today we're going to take a heuristic analysis approach to evaluate Payday 3's user interface and user experience, also known as UI UX, which I will truncate and use in the future for the sake of clarity. Currently, just as a quick background, this game is sitting at 39% approval on Steam. A lot of those reviews are due to people during the, the week of release review bombing the game because the game wouldn't work. The server architecture was down. Payday, or rather, Starbreeze was relying on a third party for their servers and it wasn't working out. People weren't playing the game. They were in their right to review bomb the game for that. But if you drill down and dig into some of these reviews, you will find gripes with the UI and overall the user experience. So we're going to talk about some potential areas of improvement. We're going to be constructive in this conversation and we're going to perhaps suggest some solutions to some of the problems that myself and other members of the community have identified. So we're going to get into that. The way that we are going to do this analysis is via Nielsen's 10 heuristics. Heuristics are essentially rules of thumb, so they are good practices and good rules of thumb to abide by whenever you're developing a user interface and evaluating user experience. We're going to delve into each of these 10 as we take a look at the menu you have in front of you, and we're going to probe into it a little bit. We're going to break it down and identify some of the areas where the game doesn't exactly follow best practice heuristics. So this video will not be any sort of flagrant insulting to the game. I'm a Payday fan to my core. I couldn't do that to begin with. I'd break my heart. Um, but it's also not going to evaluate some gameplay or mechanical design choices as well as it's not going to focus super hard on the fact that servers were down for a while. That certainly was a UX problem. But um, it's it was there and it's gone and we've moved on. Uh, we're here to identify things that we can work on and improve, not things that were problems in the past and to harp on them. So without further ado, let's jump into the 10 heuristics and take a look at Payday 3's UI UX. Here's the first one. And remember, these are rules of thumb, these heuristics here. Visibility of system status will be the first area of investigation. The question we're asking here is, does the user or player know what the program is doing or the state of the program? Of course, the program in this instance is Payday 3. And you can also break this down a little further and ask, hey, are there states within the states or microstates? So uh, I know it can go deep here, but a good example of a system state would be matchmaking. Having a pop-up show you that you're currently in the matchmaking queue gives you visibility of system status. But you could also have whether or not you just bought a gun, right? That's not the system overall, but it's a system inside of Payday 3. So there are levels to understand exactly what the game's doing, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So now let's do the fun part and dig into Payday 3's UI to evaluate visibility of system status. So first item on the docket, we're going to head over to the loadout menu, and uh, we're going to notice that there is nowhere in this menu whatsoever to keep track of which favors you've purchased. So to go purchase a favor, you have to go down into vendors. You have to click or default to gauge arms dealer. 
and scroll all the way down until you find the favors tab. And first things first, having favors all the way at the bottom when they're purchased so often, even below all of these stickers and schemes, we'll get to those in a little bit. Having the favors so far down is already somewhat of a UI UX issue that it's so burdensome to get there. But in addition, there's no method to understand. For example, if I were to purchase a medic bag, the system gives me visibility that I bought this medic bag, but it doesn't tell me how many I had before or how many I have currently. And that's a major issue. I would recommend we solve that as soon as possible. We will also see how favors and its lack of inventory system will play into a heuristic in the future, but we will leave that discussion for then. Next up, the social system. The social system can be accessed by either clicking this button down here or pressing the hotkey P. Upon clicking this, you see a list of friends to the left, but there are subgroups. You've got Steam friends here, Payday, blocked players, assumedly those players that you blocked, that's intuitive, and then people who are offline. What isn't so intuitive is why there are two tabs here and here, Steam friends and Payday. The reason is Nebula, and the fact that Nebula is not perfectly synced with Steam makes it to where there's a differentiation between friends you have in each of these groups. This is not a good UX for users. There's been a lot of complaints about like keeping track of these, as well as from a visibility of system status perspective. There have been some issues with players appearing offline when actually being online and I'm not I don't have hundred percent of the details on the issues here but it could be related to either people on the steam or payday list in essence and in conclusion to this point this is pretty clunky and it's not the best way to have the system show you the status of who is online and you know who you want to play with ultimately at the end of the day people don't care assumedly if you have a friend on pc xbox or ps4 they just want to play with you that's what matters at the end of the day unless if you're an elitist who's like you know, pc master race but right that's the case next currently there is no way of telling in game who is masked up from portraits I'm going to show an image here on the screen to demonstrate what I mean by that. But uh, there is currently not an intuitive way to understand who is masked up. You have to tell by whose health bars are not blurred out. It seems clunky and somewhat unintuitive. A suggestion that was made to me by um, a payday for, uh, pal of mine, a Sneaky Banana, he mentioned, hey, why don't you just slap a mask on whoever's masked up? That way it's intuitive. Hey, you know exactly who is masked up and who's not. That seems like a good way to, for me, at least in my eyes, to do that. But I understand it takes work from a programming perspective. Lastly, gun statistics. Let's go back to our main menu here. Let's head over to loadout. Now, in this case, I have the VF. 7s the scar now from just looking at this menu here taking a look at damage recoil stability you get a relative sense of this seems like a mid damage high recoil medium stability and accuracy weapon uh, i firmly understand the ammo count that there's 30 rounds in a magazine and 200 in reserve but these statistics up here, you don't really get a good grasp on exactly like, hey, if I click on the Ziv Commando in SMG, sure, there's a comparison that's made and I can see red bars and green bars, but I, I don't know the numbers, right? Like how many shots less does that mean that it takes to kill a cop or like, you know, headshot kill? Uh, an enemy or something like that right this recoil value how much of this is actually felt there are questions that numbers would answer and to my knowledge 
Starbreeze is currently working on those numbers. So I won't press on this too much. It's been addressed by the developers, but it's still something that's in the game and I feel is necessary to point out. Okay, heuristic number two. Match between system and real world. In this case, we're talking about nomenclature, language. Does the nomenclature and language match up outside of Payday 3 in between comparable systems? And the answer to that, for the most part, is yes, with a notable exception. And it's an exception that we will talk about in a little bit as well, but we will briefly talk about it here. Inside of challenges of all places, you will see a bar down at the bottom and a number here. This number is your level. That much is intuitive, right? Except what lies to the right of it is not. This is IP or infamy points. If we were to click on a challenge and hit the H bar, we will see that uh, completing, did I say H bar? I meant H button. What am I on? Completing challenges gives you infamy, which in turn unlocks vendor items and awards you skill points for customizing your playstyle. So it's essentially telling you, hey, completing these challenges will give you infamy points or IP, and that will level you up. That is not standard industry nomenclature. Normally it is XP or experience points. And XP is generally generated by completing levels, by killing enemies, by achieving map objectives, etc., etc. IP fundamentally, and we'll get to that in a little bit, fundamentally is different than XP. But from a nomenclature perspective, it can leave users confused about what the heck it is, and moreover, what it does. What's its function? And then also, how the heck do you get this stuff? We'll dive this more into this more in, in more detail later, but I wanted to briefly touch on the fact that IP is not industry standard. And generally, it's a good thing to encourage new things and to try new stuff. But when it leaves your community confused and wondering what this does and what it even is, sometimes it's not the best idea to go against industry standards when it leaves your community confused like that. So uh, a potential solution to this is somewhat on the nose, but reverting back to XP, at least for the purposes of nomenclature. Um, but I will present the argument later that it's also for another reason, but we'll move on. Okay, heuristic number three, moving on. User control and freedom. Does the user or player have control and freedom over their game? Well, the answer, we'll find out. Okay, so to answer this question, I have just queued up into an Overkill Road Rage lobby. And the first thing that you will notice is this ready button here in the bottom left. We're going to test that in a little bit. Um, but first, let's say that Mr. Horny Posting Joe, Jesus, what a name. Uh, let's say Mr. Posting Joe... Uh, join my lobby and I didn't necessarily want him to. Let's say I set it to friends only and oh, I meant to just put it to invite. Let's say he was a Steam friend. Uh, for the record, he's not. Currently, there's no way to remove this guy from the lobby. There's no vote to kick, even if I wasn't a host uh, to initiate a vote to kick, say he was a, a griefer. Or if I was the lobby host, I was the one to initiate, to initiate it, I can't do anything about it. Well, okay, let's say I'm, whatever, I'm cool with having Mr. Posting Joe along. I think I'll just ready up and, oh, I forgot to put an ammo bag. Oh, no. Looks like the only option that we had was to leave. And so, uh, after this intro cinematic, I'm going to come back to the main menu and discuss this a little bit. There's a couple major issues, right? Despite the fact that that guy's name was 
uh, somewhat suspicious. The diversion worked. Let's <laughs> get going. So coming back to the main menu here, there was no unready feature. Starbreeze understands this, and they're currently working on it. But it, it's been in the game for, to be honest, a little too long, and it's still worth bringing attention to, especially since they've delayed their October 5th patch. So the inability to unready in the lobby, as well as having zero kicking function at all, no vote to kick, no host kick, nothing, if griefers ever start to catch wind and that becomes like really popular to ruin people's lobbies by going loud and then leaving, that's going to be a major issue at some point. And I want to have the vision and the foresight to perhaps anticipate some of these things and implement systems for when and if that ever does become a problem. But enough said about Heuristic 3, let's move on to number 4. Okay, Heuristic 4, Consistency and Standards. Does Payday 3 use industry standards when it comes to fundamental UI UX mechanics? And in this case, we're talking about workflows and progression inside the game. I've alluded to it before, there's one major issue. Ah, you caught me, it's IP. Right, I come back to this here for consistency and standards, more to compare and contrast what Payday 3's got for its progression with what the rest of the industry is doing. And as I said before, I will always encourage innovation in trying something new. It's never okay to be complacent with the stagnant and old ways of old. But on the fundamentals, on the foundations of gameplay experience and UX, right? This definitely does fall in a UX category in terms of understanding workflows and what's going on here. Having these systems not intuitively match up or having significant overlap can present uh, an issue with players feeling like, oh, I'm, hey, I'm getting forced into a play style or... I didn't even know what was going on, how much else in the game is just esoteric, arcane, I have to try to figure it out and search for it. It's not a good way to start your relationship with your user right off the bat. So it's a suggestion of mine to better integrate with industry standards for progression to better match what users are expecting going in and then innovate on top of that, right? Keep the fundamentals, the foundations the same, so your innovations can shine. Okay, heuristic number five. We're almost halfway there. Error prevention. Does Payday 3 prevent users from getting into error-prone situations before the errors even occur? Think proactively. Instead of dealing with the error and having error-handling workflows, what if we can prevent users from even getting there? To be honest, I don't have much to say on this topic other than perhaps a helpful suggestion. So here we're in the loadout screen, and let's say I want to purchase a weapon, okay? And let's say that I want to purchase an SG Compact 7. I don't know, pick an item, right? You're prompted with a menu, this is good error prevention. Uh, are you sure you want to do this? And this is good practice. This is best practice, right? Instead of just clicking it and, oh, I just bought it. There was no double check. And this is an example of many things that I won't discuss because this is a constructive criticism video. This is an example of something done very well. This is industry standard. It's best practice. It's great. The only suggestion I have is that once I press that button, the transaction is finalized. It's bought, I have to go back to my loadout to figure out, oh, okay, I bought this item. Well, what if I, I bought it and I'm like, oh crap, actually, I mean, I, I click that second menu, I, I wanna give it back. The only option now is to just destroy it, which I'm cool with throwing away 500K, it's nothing. Um, imagine saying that in the real world. I'm, I'm cool with just throwing away 500K. Wow, and there are some people like that. Anyway, tangent, there's no way to revert the transaction and there doesn't necessarily have to be it's simply a suggestion in tangential cases if a user makes 
a decision even going through that extra menu that it might maybe be worth thinking about having some sort of temporary refund system but that's only a suggestion otherwise we're looking great now we're gonna breeze through this slide because it doesn't necessarily apply directly to payday 3 but I wanted to include this in here because it's consistent with Nielsen's 10 heuristics which is the template or industry gold standard specifically for healthcare my background in terms of heuristic evaluation but here it is recognition rather than recall does payday 3 require the user to remember details instead of transferring them over and again there's nothing much to say here this is coming from a world where if you ordered a uh, I don't know a urinalysis for a patient or something having to remember that you did that and the the transaction number and then putting that else somewhere in the system that's that's bad mojo you don't want users to remember a number like that not much to say here in terms of of payday three but i wanted to throw it in there heuristic seven on the other hand is incredibly relevant and this is flexibility and efficiency of use the question here is does payday three's ui allow for flexibility and does it efficiently accomplish its objectives and we're going to talk about that one okay welcome back we have just queued into overkill road rage i made the lobby invite only because i'm a masochist and i'm going to attempt this alone just kidding we're here to talk about favors again and we discussed it before but i wanted to show a major issue here in terms of flexibility and efficiency of use so here we have our favors list right the only place in the game where I can see an inventory of them and let's say for some reason I wanted to use a zipline bag and I didn't have one in my inventory well what happens is I'm screwed uh, I can't buy one there's no like plus sign here or um, any other method to try to obtain one so if I run out I have to go back to my menu I have to leave the lobby I have to go to loadout or rather vendors sorry gauge arms dealer scroll all the way past this stuff and then grab a zipline bag which I'll probably use one in the future again so I'll stock it up to two that is no bueno we should be able to purchase some of these in our lobby if we see that we don't have any and having to come back to the main menu to navigate to vendors to buy one is too laborious it is not flexible and it is not efficient that's a major problem next challenges I told you we were gonna come back to them and here we are currently this is the only breakdown of challenges in the game mind you the reason we care is because the entire progression system is built around these challenges IP is designed with these at its core and heart so this is the reason why we care some games have challenges stocked in its back filing room and no one ever goes there because no one cares in this case we do care and we do have use cases to navigate these challenge menus but here's what we've got we've got heists and that's it we have career and that's it and combat and that's the only category for this problem there are currently 639 challenges under heist and if you want to go find the challenge for uh, oh gosh road rage how many times you've beat it on overkill you have to cycle through and hit E until you find it and obviously I'm not directly looking for it I'm just pressing the E and Q button here but you get the problem there's no query system there's no filter there is no categorization that goes further than heist and that's a problem when you have so many challenges inside of the menu and you have users wanting to find them a solution for all of these break it down into categories one degree of depth further 
in the case of heist where these boxes lie you could put no rest for the wicked road rage you could put dirty ice and uh un gosh what is that uh the 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 nightclub level whatever that is right you you break them down into your heists little boxes you can click and then once you click on those oh hey look i'm at my dirty ice challenges oh nice same thing with career uh, you don't necessarily have to break it up here it's just uh levels and for some reason weapon based challenges are inside of career that's backwards these need to get moved into combat like i'm not going to career to see whether or not i've completed a heist with all base mods unlocked for the Moscone 12 classic that should be located under combat these are guns right put the gun challenges in the gun challenge box but there are ways to break it up here so by assault rifles by shotguns by primary secondary there are even enemy uh, challenges in here like destroy 10 zapper batteries so have an enemies category or miscellaneous right defeat 30 enemies while sliding there are ways to go about this but this this categorization has to change this is a major issue because you have players at high level now min maxing their IP trying to find all of the challenges they haven't done yet and if they want to find a specific one they got to start searching and we don't want that Okay, we're not done yet. Head over to play and hit the heist button. Now, do you notice any differences here between Payday 3 and Payday 2? The answer is a lot. And unfortunately, the differences aren't in the positive direction. First things first, story videos. Good thing Stuff I was that able you to can reach play, you guys. The whole thing and you watch it once this and that's all you care about. I have to exit out because the dialogue. We're going to talk about voiceover dialogue here in a little bit. But uh, the way, and there is fe functionality to remove these uh, from this horizontal PowerPoint presentation, uh, <laughs> is to press the R button or to click There's that button. Cash just sitting in this branch and bank. I'm not listening to that again. So I can back out and it keeps that setting so the story videos are toggled out. If I were to exit the Payday 3 application and come back in, they would repopulate, and I would have to press the R button again. That is not good UX. This is a setting that needs to be stored in a JSON or a TXT settings file, and it needs to be maintained from game session to session, instance to instance, so that users don't have to keep pressing R every time they enter into the menu. That is a customization feature for flexibility that should exist. Now, let's talk about what happens if I actually click one of these. I heard you were back from retirement. Good. I am pleased. Okay. I'm going to save you from that dialogue. You get the point. Every single time that you click into a heist, you automatically play the voiceover dialogue from the voice actor. There is no setting in the game to turn it off apart from voice volume. If you turn that down, you also can't hear heisters or shade inside of the heists say their voice lines. So you sacrifice to not hear these voiceovers. That's a problem. And to my knowledge, Starbreeze is working on a solution for that, implementing a setting for voiceover dialogue. And that is wonderful. Please implement that as soon as possible. I don't want to keep hearing this over and over and over again. Ice tea's great and all, but I right, so here's the deal. Gets a little annoying after you hear it 50 times. Okay. Moving on. Heuristic number eight. Aesthetic and minimalist design. Does Payday 3's UI accomplish its objectives with appealing aesthetic and minimal elements? Oh boy let's have a conversation so if we were still on the topic of heist this jewelry store holds a lot of value oh please don't play the dialogue there are a lot of diamonds ah, and God, we're gonna listen to it in this jewelry store ah! let's take it off their hands here's the deal with this menu 
and I, I thought about putting it between aesthetic and minimalist design and flexibility and efficiency of use. But it's interesting that they put this map of New York City on here because if you were in Payday 2, you would have this, except it would be of DC, and you could click on which heists you wanted to play from this area, kind of like it was these heists were popping up in the area and you could queue up for a job. That system was called CrimeNet, and CrimeNet was booted. And to be quite frank, I don't know why they didn't carry it over, because it was such a massive success. Not only would the return of CrimeNet return the UI into such a more aesthetic design for picking your heist instead of this horizontal PowerPoint. It also would fix a problem with its back end, its matchmaking system. Now, here's the deal. I've queued into Overkill, uh, No Rest for the Wicked, Dirty Ice, Rock the Cradle, Under the Surface, all of these, looking to find people who are trying to go loud in a heist that could be stealthed. And over 90% of the time, eh, that might be slightly exaggerated, let's say the majority, I end up in empty lobbies. And I sit there for five minutes while nobody queues in. And I'm left wondering, what the heck am I even doing? Instead, in Payday 2, you could see that somebody not only would host their own, and you could see how many people were in that lobby, you could also see, hey, they're going loud, or they're stealthing. Those are features that would be wonderful, wonderful to implement back. CrimeNet is a system that should come back for sake of UX. It would be a wonderful addition to the game and a return to a great system. Otherwise, in the aesthetic and minimalist design category, let's head over back to our vendors menu. Let's say... Let's, well, let's stay here. We're going to stay in Arms Dealer for a second. Now, you can see that there's weapons to purchase. You have these preset, bougie weapons to purchase, right? This is the only place in the game to buy them, uh, besides going to loadout and buying one, right? But it makes sense to head over to vendors, see what weapons are available, and purchase them. What does not make sense are these items. Charms and paint schemes. Paint schemes more than charms. These are items that users are purchasing when they are customizing one of these aforementioned weapons. No one, and I mean no one, is going to the vendor's menu to purchase a weapon paint scheme. And if you are, please leave a comment down below. I always love it when you guys post comments, and I would be interesting to know if anybody exists who actually buys this. At the very least, the vast majority of people are not purchasing paint schemes inside of the vendor's menu. The same thing can be applied to the mask designer. People are buying masks and customized masks. Sure, when they can. I don't know if anybody's level 101. Certainly, not. I am not. Uh, but nobody's buying mask patterns and colors inside of this menu. It's just not happening. Get rid of them. They don't need to be here. They're empty space in an otherwise crowded UI and tiny box of the screen that's used for purchasing things. You don't need more information density inside of here. Next, let's talk about loadout. And more importantly, or more specifically rather, this tab right here, appearance. Here's the deal. It would make sense to have appearance underneath your loadout. It's a part of what you're bringing to the heist. But appearance is static. It does not change from heist to heist. Your loadout does, and you can have different sets of loadouts here, right? Stuff that you change. Having appearance and loadout on the same menu depth does not make a lot of sense when one of these is static and the other is dynamic, okay? On top of that, you also have a redundancy in aesthetic design uh, that you have a loadout tab here and nested inside of your loadout tab is a loadout tab. That's redundant. Instead, a solution. Move this appearance tab in between loadout and vendors. So this horizontal list of tabs becomes six instead of five. That way, you remove the redundancy of loadout, loadout, and you also put appearance on its own high level menu depth. 
indicating that it's different than loadout in that it is static. It's a one appearance, right? Versus loadout, which you can change up. There was a wonderful suggestion by the modding community. I don't have images on me, um, but I wanted to talk about it at the very least. And I can go into perks here just to talk about them briefly. You see these keywords, they're highlighted in yellow. It's good UX, edge, grit, and rush, these three down here. Having these icons color coded, so edge is red, grit, blue, rush, yellow, something, right? Having these icons color coded and their respective perks that interact with them color coded to the same and perhaps a mix of colors if they interact with multiple. That would be such a boon and a blessing to the UI to have that fresh color coding and aesthetic inside of this game. It would be a wonderful addition. The modding community comes up with sometimes questionable but often beneficial UX improvements. Uh, some of the stuff you see on there is not NSFW. Uh, but the, there's good stuff on there too. And so I, I want to give credit where it's due. That came from the modding community. Okay. We're going to slow our roll a little bit here as we wrap up the 10 heuristics. Number nine. Help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Does Payday 3 help users recover from application errors? And I'm not going to head back to the game for this one because it's difficult to obtain this image ad hoc, but I'm going to leave this here. Question, what information can you get from this error message? Well, I imagine matchmaking error, that's pretty obvious. Um, so something went wrong with matchmaking and I'm given the option to return to the main menu and to return to login. Besides that, this gives absolutely no information to the user. I had an instance literally today where Payday 3 was throwing me nothing but a Nebula connection error and I could not log in for the life of me. It was just a me thing. No one else on the discord was saying anything. I talked to my buds. They could get into the game. And I was confused and off my rocker. I was like, why is this happening? Turns out I needed to restart my internet out of all things. Why? I have no idea. But I certainly got no help from the menu that just told me Nebula connection error and nothing else. This is a problem. These error handling messages. And again, I'm, I'm not a programmer. I mean, I am, but not a game designer. I don't understand fully all of the error codes and what is given and what is thrown by some fundamental software. But certainly there can be some more effort put into the information that's given back to the user here. Uh, matchmaking error with a subtitle of matchmaking error is uh, shallow to say the best. Lastly, number 10, help and documentation. Does Payday 3 provide helpful application information when needed? Let's take a look. Okay, for this one, I'm going to talk about what exists and perhaps what could be added to help out. So as you see, there is a help tool tip by pressing the H button inside of the game. So spacebar to close, H bar to open. Great, they've got the fundamental uh, step taken care of for heuristic number 10. There is help and there is documentation. The question is, it does it give information that the user does not intuit, right? This heuristic is designed for systems, for functions that are uh, complex at their core and perhaps by necessity complicated. You hope you don't get there but a system that a user does not intuit by natural workflow. Here, the information of vendors sell weapons and cosmetic items is not helpful information in that it is already naturally intuited by the user. Somebody could probably figure out that vendors sell weapons and cosmetic items. 
but it does not tell you that vendors sell favors, which is found at the bottom of this specific tab. It also does not tell you about heist specific favors. There's no documentation on that subject. And the entire community is asking how the heck do you acquire these assets? Also, it is not best practice to keep the community in the dark about such fundamental um, components to your gameplay. Uh, there's nothing gained by you as a developer by having something that uh, is often used and sometimes key to certain strategies just be left in the dark at how the heck I get a drop-off point for a bag, right? That's, that's not good practice. Having help and documentation to explain some of these more unintuitive, more complex systems, right, complex in that nobody understands how you get high specific favors right now. Having some documentation on those would be an absolute boon to the game. So that was heuristic number 10, and that's all we've got. We've taken some time, we've delved into some components of Payday 3's UI UX using a heuristic analysis. And clearly this was not a comprehensive list. You're likely screaming out, hey, come on, dude, like why didn't you catch the thing that I've been pissed off about for weeks? And I encourage you to put that in the comments down below so I know what I missed. But all of this is constructive criticism for Starbreeze to take and say, we've got a guy who's somewhat trained in UX and uh, he's pointed out some things and maybe these are some points to work on. Not to be ashamed of, but to work on and improve your product. My name is Pepe Chad. Thank you for stopping by. And I hope you've enjoyed this heuristic analysis of Payday 3's UI UX.